Hi, I'm going to show you how to get good looking eyes in Godot. And if you find this helpful, please subscribe. So let's dive in. I made this Reddit post over here and people seem to like it. And it's not very easy to get a good result. So I wanted to share how I did it. So the shader I used was the Parallax Eyes by Nico Arts. And it was made for go to 3.5, I believe. And some people commented on it that it only works on flat surfaces like the plane. And I will show you how to get it working on any mesh. And I will also show you how to migrate the shader over to Godot 4. And if you're not interested in the migration and how to do that. And this project is on my GitHub. And if you start it and go into resources and go into grow, you will find a folder with the name of the video. So let's start by copying this shader and go into grow. And we're going to make this a 3D scene and we search for mesh instance and we can make this a plane. Let's go into the geometry and make a new shader material and new shader. And let's call this ice, ice shader. Yeah. Open an ice shader up, select everything by pressing Ctrl A and Ctrl V to paste the shader. And we will see that there are some uh, errors. So this is with the hint. So I'm guessing this is the hint albedo. We copy this and go back to i will link everything in the description so next you want to go to this reddit page they have linked some useful resources for migrating shaders and the best one i think is this one at the bottom and it looks like this so you can just press ctrl f and paste in what you want to migrate so this is the hint albedo and hint albedo has been changed to source color so just copy source color and go to godot replace hint albedo with source color do that for this one as well hint color again replace this with source color and now there's an error with matrix so copy this and head over to the migration and we're gonna search for camera matrix and camera matrix has been changed to in the view matrix so select that and let's replace this with in view matrix and now it's world matrix so let's copy this and search for this and that has been changed to model matrix it's kind of funny that it's named matrix it makes me think of uh, the matrix you know and now oh one more thing a uh, normal map and select this and search for normal map and it's only changed with underscore as well under I guess one more normal depth search for that normal map depth and is that a is that it no more errors yep and now you can see it's a little bit shiny and you can also see that here we can open up the shader parameters and there's a bunch of settings and textures we need and the way I found this was less than one second into the video about the ice shader. Maybe he explained it, but I can't bother to read that. So for less than one second in the video, we can see how his settings are and his materials. So 0.1 to 0 0.7. So they are already set and the color we can change later. So now we need the textures. There's a link here for a CC0 ice shader. So you can find this here. You can also go to materials and search for ice to find a couple other ones. You can also search for ice textures, uh, CC0. And there is texture can as well. This one also has some pretty good ones. And you can use whatever you want. I think this bumpy ice one looks pretty good, so maybe you want to try that. I'm just gonna go with this one over here, ice 04. And you can download whatever resolution you want for it. I'm gonna download a 4K texture for this, but a 2K is probably fine. Let that download and open it up and extract it. And you can press over here to see how the textures look. So control shift 2 and we will get a bunch of textures and what we want i think we can also see that so normal map under texture over texture so it's not so clear what textures we want so we can check on this image and it's a green one a white one and a darker one so let's make a new folder 
and call it ice uh, textures and we can open this one up in file manager and open up our other folder with the textures and let's just drag all of them in and we can remove the, the ones we don't need later let them import open up the ice textures and the darker one at the top so drag that in the brighter one at the middle and this one didn't have a green one but it's this one normal gl and that will give a pretty cool effect now i have some other ice textures that i'm gonna import instead so i'll make a new folder for them o2 okay i got these ones instead of one i like more this is the o2 so let's drag in the bright one middle dark one at top the normal map at the bottom and this looks really good now when you move around it will look like there's ice under the ice like in real life if some of you have seen it one thing i also like to do is make the top color a little bit darker i think it looks a little bit better and maybe change the color you can make like really cool ice like red ice but i like this it looks blue and nice one thing you will notice is that so if it's not a plane it won't look good for you and i will show how to fix that and after that you want to open up blender open up a new one and select everything by pressing a and x and if you want it to be a plane you could but it's cooler to have them 3d but it's the same process for making this a plane or a cube so let's go into edit mode and scale this on the z and scale it on the y we can add some more cuts in it so Control r and i mean four cuts should be okay on this side and maybe three cuts on this side select everything and scale it a little bit on the x-axis we can select these top ones by enabling x-ray and select these top ones enable proportional editing and press g and x and if you scroll out a little bit it will select a little bit more and rotate a little bit and that will be a pretty nice waterfall let's apply a subdivision surface modifier to make it rounded maybe set it to level 2 and you can also shade it smooth uh, oops shade smooth you don't want out the smooth I, I think it's pretty bad and maybe the bottom we want it maybe to go out a little bit so x-ray again select these ones x maybe like that yeah that looks pretty good and i can also show with a plane and yeah that's pretty good go into object mode and select everything and Control a to just apply it transforms move them up to a cursor origin yeah if we save this to our project so i'm gonna get the path if you right click your res in your Godot project and open in file manager you will get the path so i will copy the path and go over to blender and paste in this path and i will save this as ice waterfall that's pretty good open it up and i will show how it looks if we don't unwrap it so ice waterfall let's put this in here let's scale it up a little bit you have to right click it and editable children let's start with this one so if we go to the mesh instance we can just copy this one so copy the material and paste it on these ones so paste and paste and you will see they look pretty bad especially on this one it, it doesn't look the same on everything right and that's because it needs to be uv unwrapped and how to do that with these things it's not as simple as just selecting everything and pressing u and smart uv unwrap because i don't think that works for this i haven't tested it okay that actually works pretty well but there are some cuts in it that's basically not how i did it but that works pretty well and i did some research on waterfalls not for ice but on waterfalls and how they do it is that they go into face select select a face and then select everything else and press u and light map pack and then select one of the faces at the bottom and select everything and press u and follow active squads this will give you everything more in a straight line you can rotate this because if we select the top at the bottom and the bottom we will see the bottom and the top right 
So now I just scale this up to fit the UV uh, to make sure the whole UV area is filled. And then save and go back to Godot. You'll get a different result. If you scale it down, select everything and scale it down, for example, you'll get a different result again. Like now it's way bigger, right? And if you make it even bigger, you will get an even smaller result on them. I like to keep like everything in the center of the UV. It doesn't matter if it goes outside of the UV um, because it still works. Usually you want to stay inside of it, but for this it works. And now this way you won't get those cuts that we got before. Uh, before we had some cuts when we did smart UV unwrap. Uh, there does seem to be some cuts in it. I guess you'll have to try out which one works best for you. Um, but this way it works with other meshes. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.